stop by Pete's Garage? Well, it's time to put our timing chain on so we can degree the camshaft to make sure it's okay. But first, we're going to use a dial indicator to make sure we have piston number one at top dead center as close as possible. So when we put the timing chain on, we're sure we're at zero timing. Now, the thing that's different about this build than you may have noticed is different than the other 440 I built is at this point, the block is not painted. It was painted in the, uh, in the other uh, video series I did. The reason is because I'm using cast iron cylinder heads. And I have to get the tying chain, everything all set so I can put the cylinder heads on so I can paint it all at once. If you paint the parts separately at different times, sometimes the color doesn't match. So I want to get it all together so I can paint it all at once. So let's get this timing chain on so we can get the rest of it rolling. Now this process is fairly simple. I have the number one piston just below top dead center. And I'm going to bring the piston around and bring it up with uh, my crankshaft here until I get my... Let me see if I can get this turned a little bit. So I can get my indicator to move and I'm going to stop it as close as I can when it stops. Okay, so right around there. Then I'll take this and I'll zero out my, my gauge. Close to zero. Now I'll back up. And it just about just moved a little above. So if I go a little past, re-zero. I'll go backwards and now when I come up the top of that center to stop right at zero before it goes backwards it goes right up to zero so now when I go backwards like this and stop on zero I'm sure I'm as close to top dead center as possible the reason for making sure that number one is at top dead center is fairly simple you want to make sure the keyway on the crankshaft is in the right orientation so when you put your timing set on and you have your zero mark for your uh, cam gear and the zero mark for your crank gear when they're lined up it goes on correctly because you can see it doesn't take much to move that to go advance or retard that a uh, couple degrees this timing set I'm using is an SA gear SA gear timing set the number is 78125-9R so we set this on here and there's a zero mark in the keyway here for the zero timing there we slide that on. I have some lube on the back of the cam gear so that the thrust face is, lube, is lubricated. So we put that on here. My sprocket light up. There we go. Now I can put my bolts in. The cam button I'm using, you can see that sleeve I got in there for the cam button. You just put it in there and just tap it into place. Here's the cam button that goes in there. and the, uh, It's a comp cams cam button number 206. And I'm using ARP 129-1007 bolts for my cam. The camshaft bolts, clean them off, clean off the threads so they're nice and clean, and a little bit of thread locker on there to make sure it doesn't move. Now we just torque them down, 35 foot-pounds. Now the cam button goes in, and this cam button is made out, it looks like it's nylon, and it's very easy to grind, and we're going to use this because we're going to have to uh, set the thrust of the cam when we put the timing chain cover on, but I'm just going to set this in place. But you can see what I had to do, you can see how these bolts and these washers come into this center of the cam here. I had to take the cam button and mill out some slots there to clear the washers. So when I put this in here fits in there just like that. Now I'll just turn the engine over a few times to make sure that there are no issues with the cam alignment or the sprocket. And I am also going to put some lube on the inside of my cam gear so I can start to lose lube my uh, timing chain. And uh, some folks have asked what kind of uh, lubricant I use. Allen C. Blood this is just a professional assembly lube. I rubbed the number off so I can't tell you what it is, but I think it's A, uh, let's see, AL22 is the lube I use. 
So I'll just turn over a few times and as I'm doing that, just put some lube inside the gear. And as my zero comes around here, My zero timing dot coming around. I'll bring that right back to zero, zero right there. And look over here, my piston number one is at top dead center. All right now, um, most cam wheels don't come with a giant hole in the center. And the hole in the center of this crank is, is huge. It's like a uh, three quarter inch thread. So all I did was I drilled a hole, 7 16s, 14, so I can put my drill and tap it so I can put my cam wheel on here and I'm going to put this, since I have number one at top dead center, I'm going to put that straight up and I'm just going to lock this down just to hold it in place. Now the nice thing about putting a bolt in front of the, of the bolt that actually goes into the crank is that I don't have to worry that if I turn this, see how it turns, it turns that cam wheel a little bit? I can leave this locked in place and I'll put my pointer in place and I can turn the engine over by turning the bolt in the back and I don't have to worry about any of this changing when I have the, the timing pointer in place. Now, with this pointer, this aluminum pointer I have, just this aluminum wire on here, and I have that pointed right at zero because I used the indicator up here to find my number one cylinder at top dead center. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate the engine clockwise until I get back, the piston comes back to top dead center, and I am going to go past it until I watch. If you watch the needle up here, it's going to go up to zero. And I'm going to go, go up to zero. Okay, zero. I'm going to go twenty thousandths past it, right there, and read my needle right at eight thousandths right there. And now I'm going to back up, go to twenty thousandths the other way. And it's eight thousandths there. Now I am positive, since it's eight thousandths on either side of zero, I know that when I turn this all the way up to zero, Number one cylinder is at absolute top dead center, and my cam timing right now is at zero. Right there. First thing I'll check is, according to our cam card here, with 50 thousandths lift, our intake valve should open 12 degrees before top dead center. So, I will turn the engine over until my dial indicator gets 50 thousandths lift. The thousands right there, and now we should be at 12 degrees before top dead center. There we are, right in the nose. 12 degrees before top dead center. Perfect. Now, we'll take the cam card and 50 thousandths lift. It should close 44 degrees after bottom dead center. So we'll do the same thing. Up that center. I'll go through that. Okay. I'll wait for it to close. Close. There's all the way closed. Now I'll go back to the 50 thousandths lift. I'm pretty close. Hold on, I'm almost off. Make sure I got my indicator right on. It's hard to turn over just a little bit. Right there. And 44 degrees. Right there. Perfect. Okay, the next thing we're going to check is our duration. 
Our duration at 50 thousandths lift on our intake valve should be 236 degrees. Now I have my uh, indicator in the lifter valley and I have a lifter in the in the pocket there so it's resting on the cam and I'm going to rotate until I rotate until I get 50 thousandths lift on my intake valve which is right there so I'll put a little pointer right there so I know that's where it starts now I'll rotate it all the way through the duration until it closes Closes. it's going to close all the way now I'm going to go back to the fifty thousands okay there's our fifty thousands so let's see we got what is that about three let's let let's let's count We'll just count in tens. Ten. So here's ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety, a hundred. Ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy, ninety, two hundred, ten, twenty, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five. Pretty close to two hundred thirty-six. I'd say it's pretty right on with the with the uh, duration intake valve at fifty thousandths lift. Now let's just check the overall lift. All right, now the last thing we'll measure here is our uh, intake lift. Lobe lift should be 363 thousandths. I got to have that, that set at zero. We'll bring it around. We'll see how we do here. One hundred, two hundred, three hundred, sixty, three. 163, 100, 363 exactly. Perfect. Okay, so the burning question usually is, do you have to degree your cam? And the answer is, no, you really don't have to. If you get your piston number one at top dead center and your shirt's there, your keyway is in the proper orientation where it should be top dead center, you get the cam sprocket and the crank sprocket lined up with zero to zero, you're not doing anything fancy, and it goes together well, there's no reason to believe that it won't perform the way it's supposed to. It is nice, however, to go through those steps to make sure you have the right cam. We, we have the, the valve was opening exactly before top dead center was supposed to be open. It stayed open through the duration that it was advertised, and we got the lift out of it. All three of those were exactly as it said on the cam card, so I have no reason to believe that the rest of the cam is off. It is nice to do that to make sure that someone didn't accidentally throw the cam in the wrong box, get something mixed up at the factory, so it's nice to do that just to check. Um, if this is your first time stopping by, please click on subscribe, and if you'd like to get notified every time I upload a video, just click on the little bell next to subscribe, and you'll get a notification. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.